Hello everyone, welcome to Civic History. Uh, first off, I'd like to begin by once again thanking all my new subscribers and the great support you guys have given me on my videos. And I'm back again with another video. Happy Saturday. So today we're going to be discussing what is democratic socialism. Now, this conversation was sparked because Bernie has his new book out. I haven't read it yet. It's okay to be angry about capitalism. And I've seen some stupid conversations, shall we say, on Twitter about what is and isn't democratic socialism. So I thought I'll make a video explaining what it is. Also, this I was scrolling through some of my old memes from 2016 and 2020, and I found uh, this image. Now, I don't like it. It's factually wrong, but I will get you why this image is wrong. Fun fact, we've never had a democratic socialist president of the United States. We've had some progressives slash social democrats, but never a democratic socialist. Also, because this is always brought up, no, these are not socialist countries. Norway, Denmark, Sweden, France, Russia, Venezuela even, Canada are not socialist countries. Some of them may have had socialist parties govern them or be governing them, but they are not socialist countries. Mainly when we hear these socialist countries, it's a mix of these two, social democracy and left-wing populism, but we'll get to what those are later. So here's a dictionary definition of democratic socialism. The first definition that's commonly used is a socialist economy, you know what that means, alongside a democratic government and society. Or the other one is achieving a socialist state through a democratic process. The reform route in Reform v. Revolution. And I know you're all saying, yeah, but what does that mean? Well, I'll tell you. And it depends on who you ask, is my answer. Some argue a democratic socialist society is essentially just another, is a more pure way of achieving a socialist state as opposed to the Marxist-Leninist model set up with the Soviet Union. There are others who declare it's an entirely new variant altogether, such as Tony Benn, who see it as a way of transforming a liberal democratic capitalist country into a peaceful socialist state. Rosa Luxemburg somewhat defines uh, democratic socialism as just the base state of socialism, that you cannot have socialism without democracy, though calling her a democratic socialist I don't necessarily say, is think is accurate. I will admit, though, there is a large overlap between two democratic socialism and communism. They really end up with the same goals. What a democratic socialist society would look like? Well, it depends on who you ask. There are people who are much better political philosophers than I am who have defined this. But this is the example that I picked was the people's state of Bavaria during the German revolutions of 1918 to 1919, which was an unrecognized socialist state that tried to make an independent Bavaria in the Weimar Republic, yet by Ernst Holler here till he died, and then and his political party, the Independent Social Democrats. If you'd like me to make a video on the German revolutions, I I would love to. That would be a that's a fun time in history. Uh, and then I know you're also wondering, well, are there democratic socialist parties? You probably already know us, but here's some. We got the left in Germany, the Euro left, the green red front in Denmark up here in the corner, La France en Semisev, Podismos, the Workers' Party, some factions of like very local democratic parties have wrote in. I think the local democratic party of one like city in Colorado wrote uh, the peaceful transition from capitalism to socialism, uh, as long with the Swiss Social Democratic Party. Yeah, there are also democratic socialist factions of the French Socialist Party, uh, Labour, I mentioned that, the, S the Social Democrats of Germany, the Spanish Socialist Workers Party has a democratic socialist faction, but you know, and yes, there are democratic socialist politicians, though there is some debate about Bernie. You may recognize uh, this is the labor minister of Spain, even though she's a member of the Communist Party. She calls herself a democratic socialist. 
one of the coolest congressmen in Michigan, Rashia Taleb, Jeremy Corbyn, Rebecca Long Bailey. Though when most of these people get in power, you'll see they... Why don't they do socialism? Well, Francois Mitterrand here has an answer. Basically, social, the ability of welfareism they can do is heavily constrained by the capitalist economy and society that lives around them. So we end up back here. Why they always end up being social democracy and left-wing populism. So we'll talk about those. There's the dictionary definition. It's basically what most modern industrial democracies are. You have capitalism. You have a strong welfare state. You have some public ownership where the market just doesn't work, such as in healthcare or energy. And it works really well. It's often some people also call it a mixed economy. In the United States, we call social democrats progressives. Look at the ideas they support and social democracy's definition, they're exactly the same. And then there's also this. This is how a lot of left-wing politics has been remade for the 21st century. It gets a lot of the rigid class struggle stuff out of the way, and it's sort of made... it Socialist theory just basically plays a lesser role in establishing coalitions and what their goals are, but it's still many left-wing populist parties are diehard socialist parties. I also have a little issue with anti-elitism and anti-establishmentism because I think that leads to a blind populism, but I could make a video on why I hate blind populism too. So leave it in the comments if you want me to do that as well. And then let's talk about the largest socialist society in the United States, the Democratic Socialists of America. They are probably, the, as I mentioned in my third parties video, which I will link down below, they are the most successful third party in America if you take number of elected officials, uh, they are a multi-tendency democratic socialist organization. Now what that means is they have the democratic socialism as their main goal, but they also embrace that some people are communists, some people aren't social democratic socialists, they're just social democrats, but they like a lefter, they like a spicier version. Uh, some are anarchists, some are libertarian socialists, but their united goal is achieving democratic socialism. So yeah, here is all their chapters. Uh, if you're curious, I'm a, I am a member, so I'm a little bit biased, but that's not doxing myself or anything. Here's their chapters once again across the United States, and I would like to say thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and if you're feeling generous, share my channel with a friend. All right. Bye. See you soon.